Hello YouTube, um, it's me again. I'm just uh, giving you a little brief update on uh, on my little solar project here. Um, as you can see, for those who have watched my previous videos, I've added some additional components uh, to the system. Um, I decided to, you know, as opposed to going with the backup scenario, the system as it was was great for backup, and it's in it, it fulfilled that purpose, you know, very, you know, very well. Um, however, you know, I kind of, I now want to take, you know, various, uh, you know, rooms in my house off the grid, in my home office for one. Um, and so, in order to do that, I need more panels or I need more watts coming into the system. Again, you know, with two panels, it was great for a backup. One short, one solar uh, charge controller, great for a backup. It it, it functioned perfectly. I've also, you know, uh, wanted to include more safety in the system. I've been doing a lot of reading on the uh, National Electric Code and in relation to photovoltaic uh, systems and so forth. And, you know, it's the idea behind the codes. It's uh, not to be a hindrance. It's to for to incorporate safety and to build more reliable systems, uh, you know, longer lasting systems. And being a, you know, I'm a systems engineer and I can honor and respect that uh, because the idea is to build something not only that's functional, but that's, you know, a little more enduring and lasting and safe. Uh, with my system here, I've added a new charge controller, a power strip, a grounding bar to earth round my equipment, and two, uh, two more disconnect switches, um, and I'll talk about those later. And to get more power, um, I've included uh, two new panels. They're 200 watts apiece, and I'll give you the specs on those. Um, and so let's begin with the new charge controller. The new charge controller is another SunSaver MPPT uh, 15 amp. Uh, right now, I I've got it plugged into this, uh, you know, the uh, actually this 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 solar panel disconnect switch here, and you can see I have the red wire, but I don't have the uh, negative lead yet uh, because I haven't installed the panels. Um, and this is just the wire going into this particular 60 amp switch. Now this is an MPPT charge controller and I, I went with another one as opposed to buying a combiner box and, uh, you know, and, and connecting them that way or even buying a bigger, con a ch bigger charge controller and combine them that way. Um, because I did some research on the net, looked at forums and so forth and some people say well you know you can hook, them, hook your panels together you know, in parallel and, or you can hook them in serial, you can do this and you can do that. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is I couldn't get a straight answer where I felt uh, that was least risky. So I contacted the manufacturer. So, you know, lesson learned is whenever you're in doubt about any piece of equipment or how they go together, you know, if, you, if, you, if it's possible, contact the manufacturer. They'll tell you, you know, what you can and cannot do with their equipment. So I called the manufacturer, explained the situation. They were like, well, first of all, the panels that I have on the roof are 12 volt, pan uh, 12 volt panels for a 12 volt system, even though they are in serial, but they're 12 volt panels. And these panels are considered 24 volt panels. So they, the, so they suggested the best approach would be to get another, another charge controller and you know go that route and put the charge controllers in parallel. Now, the thing is, with these charge controllers, again, I looked at research and they said, well, in order to have both of them, you have to have some type of communication circuit from this charge controller to that charge controller. That's not true. Um, with the SunSaver uh, by Morningstar or these MPP charge controllers, the way they're tied in is the negative lead right here that goes to the battery is actually connected in parallel with this charge controller at the shunt. Okay, now as far as the positive leads, they're connected also in parallel on this main battery lug on the first battery. So both of them are getting the exact same voltage readings and or will be getting the exact same bolt voltage readings and be and will be charging the battery according to those uh, voltage readings. And they'll be working in tandem with each other. Why did I do it that way? Because the manufacturer said that that was the way to go. Um, you know, people in forums, again, I respect everybody's opinion, but, you know, when you're, you know, when you purchased, you know, this charge controller and you've got a question about whether or not it's going to work in a certain way, 
it's best to just call the manufacturer and go with their recommendations. I also included these switches. These are not breakers, but they're switches. They're 60 amp switches. Um, because, you know, I was really, you know, worried about safety because, you know, I'm changing cables and stuff is sparking and this, that, and the other thing. It's not that I'm doing something crazy. I was being, you know, incredibly careful. Uh, the thing is, when you put a, this connection, you know, to this terminal, um, you know, before that connection is solid, yeah, there's going to be a spark or two. And, you know, basic electrical safety is shut off all power, <laughs> okay, in the circuit that you're working on. And so basically I put in these switches. They're just basic, uh, you know, just basic switches, you know, and uh, this right here is a solar panel disconnect. Basically it will disconnect the solar panels from the chargers, okay? Basically it'll cut off all electricity to those chargers uh, from the solar panels. This, I need to get it labeled. I ran out of labeling uh, material right at the last minute. Uh, but this is a disconnect, okay, from the chargers to the battery, okay? This is a disconnect from there. Now, each one of these is 60 amps, okay? The key thing is there is not going to be more than 15 amps coming from either one of these controllers to the battery at any given time. And there's not going to be more than 8 amps from the panels uh, to the chargers at any given time. So these switches should be more than adequate, okay? If I find that they're not, then obviously I'll replace them. Also, um, I put in a ground bar, uh, you know, because I went through the in the NEC, you know, recommendations, so, you know, ground it. There are two types of grounding. There is the conductive ground and there is the earth ground, okay? these This is earth grounded. There's a ground rod on the outside of the house driven into the ground. Uh, basically a, some type of maybe a steel uh, rod or something and this right here will ground all of my equipment I've grounded the charge controllers off the negative lead or the negative input here on the load side and the same uh, and this is based on manufacturers recommendations I've also grounded the switches okay um, these switches are grounded to the rod also my inverter is grounded Okay, so everything is grounded. My panels will be grounded, the panels on the roof are grounded, and these panels will be grounded also. Um, and so uh, that will give me, you know, uh, some more increased protection. Obviously, I still have my little switch here. And for overcurrent protection, I have my, you know, inline fuses. One here, and I have two here. There's, there's, there's one here, and here's another one. Again, and there is one more for the uh, trimetric uh, battery monitor. So I have overcurrent protection. So, and you know, in the future, I actually, I actually right now, I actually have a fire extinguisher that I'm going to, that I plan to mount on the outside of this utility room. Again, now let's take a look at these panels. Uh, these panels are 200 watts a piece, and their characteristics are at, um, they're going to be tied in serial, so they're going to be, they're going to give me 55 volts at, you know, uh, under load, 55 volts, and about 7.28 uh, amps, okay, and they're, they're going to be mounted on a pole on the, in the yard on a, in a top-mounted uh, racking configuration, it's going to be top-mounted on a Schedule 40 pipe in concrete. Um, the reason I'm doing all of this is because, again, the backup system is fine, but on the grid, uh, I mean, if I want to take some of my, like my home office off the grid, I need more watts. Now, and one thing in, you know, these panels in series are going to give me a lot of voltage. I've found, a, based on observation, that these MPPT charge controllers actually do better with more voltage. The more voltage you have, the better off, these, the better these things work. Because it's a matter of power, meaning watts. The power coming out of the system must equal the power coming into the system. So with these charge controllers, based on the technical data sheets that I read, these charge controllers actually uh, have a DC to DC converter circuit. And what it does is it takes the, it takes the higher voltage that comes into the system and you know, either decreases or, or increases the voltage based on your battery needs. For instance, on a cloudy day, let's say you're getting you know, on a 24 volt system, I'm getting 36 volts. So what it can do is actually decrease that voltage, let's say down to 30 volts and increase the amperage up to the power level, the watts, okay, increases the amperage to, you know, and give that, that, amp, that increased amperage to the battery. Again, it's a matter of power. 
volts times watt. I mean, volts times amps equals watts. So if I increase the voltage, that means I decrease the amperage. If I increase the amperage, then I decrease the voltage, and it does that automatically within the circuit. So if you get a charge controller, don't waste your time on on regular charge controllers. Get an MPPT um, because it, it'll it'll really work out for you. I've seen this charge controller on a cloudy day jump up to 12 between 12 and 13 amps to charge up the battery on a cloudy day. So I've seen it in action and I've seen it working. As you can see right now, I've got six amps coming into the system between five and six amps uh, being charged. Um, but anyway, that's my update on my new system here. Um, uh, I actually put a new plug. I used this power strip to give me more flexibility. And I put a plug as far as um, for my, uh, my exhaust fan here as opposed to tying it on the terminal block here on my uh, inverter. It gives me, again, it gives me more flexibility. I actually put a kilowatt meter there so I can, on it, on my system, so I can get a watt reading. I'll, I have a watt reading, a, an analog type watt reading on my, uh, on my uh, transfer switch, but I think this is better. But anyway, uh, this is my update. I'll try to keep uh, you folks updated as best I can. And with that, take care.